It's the Celebrity MasterChef Finals. Getting through this final of MasterChef is, it's unbelievable. These celebrities are all passionate about food. It's final three. You know, there's a title there to go out and try and win. We're looking for that exceptional cooking star. Someone who's more than just a good home cook. Someone with that extra something special. There's no point just being here for the sake of it. I'm not here for the jolly. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to try and win. Ewan, Wendy and Jane are three of the best celebrity cooks in the country. But only one of them can become MasterChef champion. I'm going for gold. I want to win. But I think now it's just going to be a bit scary. To be honest, I got here through the skin of my teeth. So I need to raise my game and prove my worth. I want to show them I deserve to be here in the final. It's quite frightening now, because this is where the pressure gets really put on you. Today, they're thrown into the world of professional catering. And action! First, they will cook for the cast and crew of Ashes to Ashes. She's starting to frighten me. <laughs> oh, poo! Crumble, me crumble. They are deep in it. Then they'll have to survive the pressure of cooking for an exclusive charity dinner. 20 minutes before you start, let's go out. Kind of up against it, but... Nothing new there, is it? Come on, we've got to go now, yeah? <gasps> ah! Only one of these celebrity cooks will have the drive, the ambition, the skill and the palate to lift the title of MasterChef. To help the celebrities prepare for what lies ahead, they face their first challenge. This first task we call the larder task. Sometimes you've got to create a dish from what you've got in your fridge or from your cupboard. Ladies and gentlemen, one dish, 40 minutes. Let's cook. The larder ingredients include duck breast, jasmine rice, cherries, noodles, chili, orange, ginger, pak choy, soy sauce, honey, apricots, puff pastry and coconut milk. The ability to be able to think on your feet and invent menus is the real essence of a great cook. Jane, now there's an impressive cook. There is someone who's grown in stature as the competition has developed. That is a trial. <laughs> that is an absolute trial. She made a chocolate fondant. It's very difficult to do. She did it right. I can't believe I just did that. I constantly want to push myself outside of my comfort zone and become a better cook. If she keeps on getting better, if she keeps on growing, fantastic. But we've also worried about the way in which Jane copes with pressure. No! Does anyone know how the cooker works? I'm actually getting a bit stressed now. I'm starting to feel like I'm going to cry. Jane, you're a finalist. I am, and I'm, like, literally shaking right now. <laughs> Can you carry on improving? Uh, I think I can cook and I think I'm open to learn and I think I'm like a bit of a sponge and I pick things up and I try and put it into practice. What are your weaknesses? What is it you're working on now? Uh, working on my confidence and going for it. That's what my weakness is, my confidence. Still? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. You've had 10 minutes. You have 30 minutes left. I love Ewan's ambition. I love his commitment, his drive, his energy, his thirst for competition. He's here because he can turn it on. There have been touches of absolute brilliance. The sauce is sticky and sweet and a flavour I have not had with beef before. I think it's really, really wonderful. 
It's just delicious. It really is. It's lovely. We see the potential. We see that spark. But he is the least experienced cook in the final. And he does make mistakes. Why has that done that? It's stuck to the deep fat fryer. Disaster. He almost went out in the last round. I've messed this right up. I'm so sorry, I can't apologise enough. Everything's greasy. It's a little bit like a posh meal served up in a transport cap. In order to win and do well in these challenges, I need to know my limitations. I really messed up. I really thought I'd blow my chance to be here. Ewan, let's be honest, you made it to the finals by the skin of your teeth. Yep. What do you think you've now got to do if you want to take the title? I truly feel I'm probably the number three cook here. I'm definitely not the best, but people slip up, people make mistakes, and that's why champions get beaten. There's always an underdog, and I'm not frightened of anyone, so I'm here to cook my socks off. Ladies and gentlemen, you are halfway. 20 minutes gone. Wendy is good. She's talented. She has the repertoire and she has the experience. Wow, what a mouthful. It's just fantastic. Oh, thank you. It's just a great, fun pudding. But she can struggle to make the most of her flavours. Sausage meat and a sweet and sour sauce. I don't know whether I'm going to a Chinese takeaway or whether I'm going to the local cafe. This acidic blue cheese comes smashing through it like a juggernaut. The dessert could probably be a little bit better considering your skill as a pudding cook. I do have a, a pretty good idea of how technically things should be cooked. Hopefully now I'm getting a better idea of combining ingredients and flavours. Wendy, you are a finalist, but not only a finalist, you're a comeback contestant. It's fantastic. I'm just absolutely, you know, thrilled to have done better than the quarters this time, but to get to the final is just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Is that the limit of your ambition now, Wendy? The ambition was to get to the final, but the problem is then, when you get to the final, that's not good enough then, is it? You've then got to hopefully, well, try your hardest to go on and win. You've got just five minutes left. Should be thinking about getting on your plates. You have one minute. That's it, you're finished, finished. With the professional challenges looming, have the finalists been able to create something exceptional from scratch? Will Jane's duck breast on jasmine rice with pak choy and a cherry sauce prove that she can think on her feet? Mm. No, I'll go with that. It is everything you would recognise from an Asian dish. And then this sweetness of cherry does come in, which is foreign, but not unpleasant. Your duck is beautifully moist. And I have some real wonderful definition of flavours. Then I have this very, very foreign sweet cherry, which is coming in amongst the sesame oil and fighting against it. Ewan has made orange marinated duck on a bed of jasmine rice with a garlic, ginger, chilli and coconut sauce. Your rice probably needs to be drained a little bit better, but the flavour of the ginger and the garlic in that rich sauce with the coconut milk carries the dish all the way through. Your sauce... I like. I like the spiciness and then the heat finish. Textures, we have an issue. Because the duck is overcooked and too chewy and the rice is really, really watery. Wendy has created Thai duck curry on honey and sesame noodles, served on a bed of pak choy and soy sauce. I think it's unfortunate to have ended up with a brown, grey colour. 
there's not enough chilli for me. And although I can taste a hint of citrus, there's also not enough of that as well. It's a dish I would eat and say thank you very much, but it's not a dish I would order again. I like the creaminess of the curry and the little bit of chilli, but it's the flavour of the soy which I'm finding a bit weird amongst the creaminess of the coconut. I suppose this is the soy it was me doing my usual afterthought. And I shouldn't have done, I should have been braver and just left it without. Today was a tough task. To walk in here, one dish, 40 minutes, I actually don't think they did too badly. As long as they don't dwell on their mistakes, they'll be okay. Ewan cooked for us duck with orange and a spicy sauce around the outside. I quite liked the sauce. It was quite powerful, but the rice was too watery, so the flavour got washed out, and the duck was slightly, slightly overcooked. Jane cooked for us bok choy, chilli, jasmine rice, perfectly cooked duck, really, really lovely, and then cherries on the side of it. I didn't mind it so much. Although foreign, it wasn't unpleasant. I would, I would have eaten that dish. I like Wendy's dish today. I thought her dish was good. I thought it was a really good concept. Thai duck curry with some noodles and some bok choy was really tasty. For me, the foreign ingredient was the soy sauce. I just wanted a little bit more sharpness or a little bit more heat in there. It wasn't a particularly great round. There were mistakes. It has brought it home that it is the final of MasterChef. I think I'd try to do too much on one plate. I wouldn't necessarily say it's set me in great stead for the challenge. That's the thing. I'm not happy, really. The next challenge is a new challenge. Hopefully, I can raise my game and uh, shine. With a lot to prove, the finalists arrive on the film set of drama Ashes to Ashes. Good morning. You are going to be feeding 90 people, oh! cast and crew, and they are going to be hungry. This is a huge task. Today, you are going to create your own menu for these people in that van over there. Good luck. Hang on, hang on. Let's just no, look okay. first. Stop. Just look Leaks. first. Look. Stop first. and look. With Wendy appointed as team leader, the finalists must design a menu from the ingredients in the catering van's larder. I've got these. I can do a bread and butter pudding with that? these. They must cook three mains, two desserts, and four side dishes. This is where planning really matters. The idea of getting so much food out on time in a restricted area is a really tough task. What about a, a puff pastry, um, a vegetable tart? It's 90 people we're feeding. It's a lot of food. So I'm hoping that they're going to get it out on time. Provençal vegetables would be nice. With salmon? No. Or would it be like a ratatouille? Oh, uh, I wouldn't no? eat that. Guys, you really need to speed up. 10 o'clock, you've got just three hours with okay. the chef. Right, decisions to be made then. Some of the riggers and the big guys want a good hearty yeah, food. Yeah. You need one curry. dish for the makeup girls and whatnot who can have a bit of a dainty, you know. They really need to get a move on, otherwise, they're not going to get this out at one o'clock. Okay. Now, uh, After taking 30 minutes to decide on a menu, the celebrities only have three hours left to cook everything. Now we've got to the point where we've decided exactly what dishes we're doing. There's just a lot, a lot to sort out. Right, get this on, get the oil on. The finalists have to cook one main course each. It's tight for space. Very tight. We haven't got food processors or blenders. It's like manual labour. Have you got a light? Mushrooms! Jane is making herb-crusted salmon with a tomato salsa. I don't know how to skin a fish. No, 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 other way. Tail end. Get hold of the tail in against the skin. Let's chop that off. So we'll put the herb on the thing. The herb needs to go on the flesh. I'm doing a uh, chicken curry with poppadoms. A lot of prep. I've never seen so much chicken, honestly. You've got 90 people, so you're definitely going to need that. Oh, I might turn vegetarian. 
Team leader Wendy has given herself the most time-consuming dish, the vegetarian lasagna. Uh, I think the biggest problem in this menu is the uh, lasagna, the sauce, the layering it and getting it on and actually getting it in the oven and cooked on time for one o'clock. And you, you think you've got enough time for that, yeah? If I get on now with the sauces... Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As well as the lasagna, Wendy's also decided to make both puddings. We are doing peach and banana crumble and then a puff pastry strawberry and vanilla slice. Wendy is giving herself the most work to do. How anybody thinks they can be in control of a team and give themselves all the work is beyond me. Right, let's get on with these sauces. It's minus one outside and the film crew have been shooting since 7am. Food is important. We work very long hours, so it's our energy, really, and you want to, to keep the old momentum going. They're on an extremely tight schedule. Lunch has to be ready at precisely one o'clock. Never late. Always quality food, never late. So I should make sure the celebrities know that, because if they're late, they'll get the wrath of Gene Hunt. They won't want that. Let's get the steps out and then we'll do a rehearsal. I'm putting some water on now for you new potatoes. I'll get those in yeah. the pan. Broccoli, let's get these mushrooms out of the way. And then I'll start on the crumble. She's being very bossy <laughs> and she's starting to frighten me. <laughs> I was uh, slicing an onion and it's it's sliced down. It's so frustrating. I'm thinking, what the heck? I've got so much to do in there. We've got a serious issue now. If Wendy can't continue because of this cut, they are deep in it. We can't really afford the time, so we're really up against it, you and I. Keep relaxed, sweetheart. Team effort. We'll help each other, all right? Yeah. Are you all right with the curry? Um, have to be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not going to feed 90 people. You're going to need another, I would I would say, another tray. You OK, Jane? Yeah. Yes, yeah. It was uh, really. half-hearted, yeah. With an hour and a half to go, Jane needs to quickly fillet more salmon, but this time without Wendy's help. She's butchered the fish. She's actually lost uh, a good 20%. She's sort of made a right mishmash of it. There you go. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, Thank well. you. OK, sorry, guys, I'm back. How are we all doing? I need to turn that way up. After 20 minutes with the medic, Wendy's seriously behind. I'm a little bit worried about the uh, lasagna as to whether they're going to get that out on time because it's running quite late now. Wendy, I, 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 think doing that. I think you might have to turn that into a roast vegetable pasta. I'm not too sure you're going to have time. OK, fine. No, that's fine. So what happened to our lovely lasagna? Because of um, cut finger, not enough time, so it's turned into a penne pasta. The, the pasta, again, can be cooked and put in the bain marie? Uh, yes, yes, it can, yeah. Are you going to add the sauce to it or serve the sauce on top of it? I'll think about that one. And action! Less than an hour to go now. Yeah. You, you, yep. you know, you need to make a move on now and really step this right. up. Okay. With the clock ticking, the finalists still need to make the two desserts and the potato, broccoli and leek side dishes. These leeks can be roughly chopped or they have to be very neat. No, quite, well, neat-ish. Neat. Eight leeks isn't enough. That's not going to feed 90 people. One more tray. One more tray? What, we're feeding rabbits? They've got to get used to their quantities. They need a lot, because these guys are hungry. <laughs> struggling with no more big pots left so you've used them all yeah are there any more bowls yeah, I'll do it. It's all come on up. boil wendy had planned to make both desserts 
a strawberry and mango slice, and a peach and banana crumble. Crumble mix, which I can't reach. Can somebody reach me, please? Where is it, sweetheart? Where is it? On the left. Top, top but with just 45 minutes until service, she's had to call on help. OK, we'll just do one tray of puff pastry. Fine. Oh, a mango. Okay, is it sweet enough with the mango so we don't need sugar? Action! On set, the crew are filming their last scene before they break for lunch. We've got 25 minutes. OK, broccoli needs to go in. The chicken is ready to go into the whatever you call it. Poppadoms. They're ready. Get those they're ready. out. They're ready to go. They're already, they're already out of their yeah. packet. No, I can do Get that. them out of the yeah. packet and put them in a bowl. My biggest concern with, with, is, is collectively all of it coming together on time. What? Your rice? Yeah. Stick it on. Guys, they're on the last shot before they break. You're happy you're going to be out on time? Yes, Because you've got like ten it. minutes now. Oh, big ones, a little knife. Right, OK, let's get the big ones back in. And let's move the crumble out. Oh, poo! Crumble, me crumble. At the moment, it's quite undercooked. Need to flash it in the oven. They now have minutes till service, but the salmon and potatoes are still cooking. It's a nightmare, to be honest. They're not ready. But on set, the actors are also running behind. Lunch has been confirmed, guys, at 1.15 now. You've got to stay of execution, and I think you've possibly needed that. We've got a bit more time. OK, so let's not panic. So the good news is you've got 15 more minutes than you thought. Yeah. We're going to get it out. Action! That is lunch, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to lunch. Thank you. I know the cast and crew are used to eating from this catering van, but this is MasterChef. If the cast and crew are disappointed by the offering today, they have failed. They're going to be on you in... 30 seconds. I'm absolutely starving hungry and very, very cold, so I'm hoping it's hot and delicious. Hi. Hey, uh, can I have uh, um, salmon, please? Yeah. Who's next, please? Um, can I have a salmon? <laughs> salmon, yeah. Okay, yeah, can I have the uh, herb crusted salmon, please? Yep. Yeah. Okay, James' herb crusted salmon with a tomato salsa is proving extremely popular. Hi. Hello. What can we get you? Curry, please. Curry. Can I get you? Curry. Thank you. Don't be stingy. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much indeed. Ewan's chicken curry also starts doing well. But Wendy's vegetable pasta has only had a handful of orders. I've had salmon and it is very nice. Um, and it is, it has been cooked nicely. The fish itself is actually very yummy. I'm quite impressed. I decided to go for the curry. Curry actually is quite good. Quite nice and spicy. Mm, very tasty. Not bad, not bad at all. It was absolutely delicious, but it's an empty plate. <laughs> Okay, guys, they're coming up for sweets now. Uh, no, well, okay. I'll do with that then. After failing to shift her pasta, can Wendy impress with her puddings? Do you want any cream? Yes. Can I have a strawberry and mango slice? Crumble, yeah, very nice, very uh, very deep and um, it seemed quite firm, but when you beat into it, it was quite crunchy with a little delicate coat and a custard, which I adored. Yeah. Well done, guys. Well, well done. done. I'm going to 
got to say, I'm impressed with our three. I think that was a job well done. Not much left on the plates. That means success. Herb Krusty Summer from Jane just walked out of that kitchen. It's a big ask, 90 people, and we haven't done anything like that before. We managed to get it out, and I was really, I was really surprised. The person who was at home in that kitchen was Ewan. Big food, gutsy food that people want to eat. I actually enjoyed it. It was one of the favourite challenges. It's not poncy food, you know, it's, it's grub. It's grub, and that's what I like. Wendy, when she cut off her thumb, she sacrificed her own food because the salmon sold well, the curry sold well, but that pasta dish did not. I will never, ever moan again when I film on location because now I know exactly what they have to do every morning. It was a tough test for them, but it is nothing compared to what is going to hit them next. So I look in your direction, but you pay me no attention. three celebrities have come such a long way. We've seen them do fine dining. We've seen them do volume. And now it's time for them to put it together. Welcome. What we want from you are 60 exquisite canapes in 50 minutes. The reason we are giving you this test is to prepare you for the next daunting fine dining challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, good luck. 50 minutes, 60 canapes, let's cook. Canapes are really hard to do and we want our contestants to make 60. 20 hot savory, 20 cold savory, and 20 sweet. With a canapé, you get one chance. You get that one bite, and it has to deliver. Ewan and canapés. Dainty, small, you know, is that typical of you, Ewan? I think you know the answer. No, it's not my typical kind of food, but... It's a challenge you've set, and I've got to prove I, I'm versatile and, and I can do it. Uh, Ewan, tell me what you think uh, a good canapé does. A good canapé should just say, wow, in the mouth, you know, you're not having bites of it. It's one mouthful, in it goes. I want you tasting it, you think that was nice, I could have another few of those. Do you feel confident? I'm a little bit shaky, if I'm honest with you, but I'm confident they're going to taste okay. The only panic I have is that I run out of time. <laughs> You're halfway. You have only 25 minutes left. I'm nowhere near halfway through my steaks. I'm really not enjoying this. This has been my toughest challenge so far. It's taken me ages to come up with them, and I'm really... I've been quite sort of nervous today. No, I can see. And if we consider you, when you came into this competition, you had timing issues, you had presentation issues. Yeah. And, of course, today's test is all about timing and presentation. It's my two weakest points, and um, they're the two things that I'm really sort of worried about. Just under 15 minutes left. Wendy, how are you coping? I'm OK at the moment, although I'm panicking a bit about plating up. Cos I need to start doing that, really, now. Is this the biggest challenge for you so far? Um, absolutely. In time-wise and in um, presentation and everything, yes. You've got 
two and a half minutes. Stop! Where you are, stop. Time's oh, up. Man. Time's up, time's up. Stop, Jane. Stop, 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 stop. stop. I'm stopped. You can't serve him. You can't serve him. Ewan has managed to plate up 20 fillet steak cruets topped with salsa verde, 20 hedgerow fruit puffs, but only 14 asparagus spears wrapped in ham with a goat's cheese and truffle oil dip. You said yourself that a canapé should be a single bite and that's it. And we know the asparagus, you can't do that unless you've got a really big mouth. Make sure they are a bite size. Lovely. <laughs> Absolutely lovely. I bit down, and first of all, all the juice, natural juice, came out of that asparagus. And then the saltiness and the deepness of the ham come in. It's delicious. Really good. The crunch and the texture is very good with the soft beef and the, the crunchy base. They're great. Your sweet ones are a complete mess. You've got jammy fruit flavour, and then you've got puff pastry. And it's screaming for some cream. It's exactly what, obviously, I had planned, but I just ran out of time. Wendy has made all of her vermouth scallops on a green olive tapenade and chorizo. Crab and fromage fray toasts with a radish, chive and caper salsa. And scones with strawberry jam and cream. Wendy, congratulations. You're the only one who got up all 60 canapes on time. Rich, salty crab, lovely, crunchy toast, but it needs more of those capers to make it richer. Well, look at that, scallops. I mean, very nice indeed. Love those. The flavour of that vermouth and the saltiness then going into the paprika, lovely, lovely flavours. But I don't like those textures, and i tell you what I don't like. I don't like chewing on that chorizo. The chorizo is a bit rubbery because it's not been cooked very much and that fat stayed solid. OK. Scones and cream. The flavour is clean, it's crisp, it's rich strawberry jam, wonderful cream and sweet, sweet scone. Delicious. I'm really pleased with myself that I managed to do it all in 50 minutes because I think that was a really hard task, really hard. Well done, Wendy. Thank you. Very well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Jane has made 20 mini prawn cocktails and walnut top medjool dates stuffed with mascarpone cheese but has failed to finish her Thai fish cakes with a spicy dipping sauce. Didn't quite make it today, did you? No, I failed on this one. It's a shame. These little shots are a nice way to do things. Soft, lovely, salty prawn, zingy sauce in there with a touch of tomato. It's a really good flavour. And I like the way they've been served. I've never seen a canopy like that. I'm quite excited. The flavours are lovely. I, I, love, I love that honey sweetness with that nut. I think that's great. What do you think you've learned from today, Jane? Um, that I'm not very good at canapés. I think you're being a little bit damning about yourself, actually. You've got to be positive about this. Wendy was the only one to get all her canapes up, 60 in 50 minutes. I've got to say, well done to her. It's one thing to complete the task, but I want to see her taste more. The crab, although it was pleasant, it needed more capers to make it fresh and vibrant. There is a question mark over the flavour combinations with these canapes. You and had two of the best tasting canopies in the room. The beef, I thought, was surprisingly delicious. Absolutely brilliant. I love that asparagus with the cream cheese and truffle. I mean, really gorgeous. The concept 
of the berries on top of puff pastry with sugar and chantilly cream. Fantastic. He's just got to get the work done. Jane is really tough on herself. Those little prawn cocktails, they look delightful. They were a good idea and they were pretty well executed. The date, that cheesy mascarpone in the middle with the walnut, I thought the flavour was great. And we don't know about the fizz cakes because she didn't get them up, but she was really close. But she had to deliver the brief and she didn't do that. What comes next for me is the toughest gig so far. They are going to a famous London landmark to cook a very posh dinner indeed. They have to cook for their lives. I am absolutely shattered. I've worked really, really hard and I've really accomplished something. I know it's going to get harder, but I'm just looking forward to whatever's thrown at us. I really didn't bargain for the exhaustion and, and how much it actually takes out of you. It's an actual endurance test of cooking. I've done well to be here, but now I have got to step it up again. As soon as it sounds, MasterChef is one of the toughest things I've done in my life. Oh, there it is. Here it is, here it is. Huge. Woo! That is tall. Stunning, isn't it? Exceptional. You are at the top of the BT Tower here in the heart of London. And tonight, there is going to be a very posh charity dinner for 60 people. Those people are paying £250 a ticket for tonight's dinner. They want more than just a view across London. They are looking for wonderful food this evening. And you, and you alone, are catering for this dinner. Good luck. Icon of the London skyline, the tower was built in the 1960s. Its revolving restaurant, 520 feet in the air, commands spectacular views of the capital. The restaurant's not open to the public. Dining here is by special invitation only. Two floors above are the kitchens where the finalists will be working under head chef Glenn John. Welcome to the tower. Plenty of work to do. You need to work as a team to get this all done. Let's get cracking. Follow me. All right, let's go. Tonight's menu has been designed by head chef Glenn. Yeah, yeah, chef. So the pressure is on to cook to his exacting standards. Jane is making the starter fried fillet of sea bream with poached prawn and squid, celeriac mash and a prawn velouté. It's a really, really, really tough challenge. I feel a little bit sick. But I'm really up for it. I really want to go for it. Get it yeah. Wendy is in charge of the main course. Roasted fillet of venison with wild mushrooms wrapped in savoy cabbage, comfy potato and a bitter chocolate sauce. A lot of people, um, lots to do. A bit scared because it's red meat. Not my forte. Don't usually cook it. Trim, wash, and cut the rhubarb into properly fine. Ewan is responsible for the dessert: rhubarb crumble with lemon posset, honeycomb crisps, and creme anglaise. Puddings aren't my strength. I'm trying to get 60 identical, posh-looking desserts that people want to eat is going to be hard. What our finalists have to do today, I think, is an extremely daunting task. As a professional, I'd be nervous doing a charity dinner for 60 people when people are paying that much money. We are throwing these three in at the deep end. With six hours until service, there's just enough time for the celebrities to prep their dishes from scratch. After failing to finish her fish cake canapes, the pressure is on Jane to serve 60 perfect starters on time tonight. 
There's a huge amount of prep involved. First, she must chop celeriac for the mash, before gutting and scoring 60 squid, and shelling 120 tiger prawns. Jane has got a hell of a workload today, and she is kicking off the whole show. She's got less time than the other two have, and she tends to buckle and flap under pressure. She can't do that tonight. She has got to keep it together. Well, Jane, I'm looking at you with a huge tray of prawns. There's a lot of prep, That's isn't there? It. 60 there's, people. There's a hell of a lot of prep, yeah. I'm just trying to be as methodical as possible and trying to keep the panic at beer. I can't remember how to do it, so. Jane also has to gut, descale, and fillet 30 sea bream. This is quite hard, Chef. Oh, some of green just squirted out a bit. Ooh. Wendy also needs to work solidly to get all her ingredients ready in time. She has to finally shred 20 cabbages cut out 60 perfect potato discs. Potatoes are ready, chef. As well as prep the venison. Have you um, trimmed up fillets before? No, nope, I don't do red meat. You don't do red I meat? I don't eat red meat and I've hardly ever cooked with it. Oh, Is it like a pork fillet? Yeah. Pork I've done fillet. a pork fillet. So on the board, trim all these up. Will do. Never going to be one of my favourite jobs. I don't know why. I used to love it as a child, and then I went on holiday one year when I was about 16, and I wouldn't eat it anymore after that. I don't know whether I'll be able to taste it. I suppose as a chef, I should should taste your food, but I'm not sure. So your dish is venison fillets, yeah, cabbage, Ooh. wild mushrooms, oh. and you don't like the sound of it. Well, I don't eat cabbage and I don't eat venison. How are you going to know when those flavours are right? I don't know. I won't be tasting it. Mix sugar, honey, glucose and water until they're... After failing to complete all his canapes, Ewan also needs to show he can serve 60 perfect dishes this evening. Basically, the ingredient sheet I've got is, uh, is for eight people, and obviously I'm serving 60, so I'm just having to work out my measurements. So time, times everything by five, five eights. Oh, that's 40. See, straight away, my maths is wrong. Ewan's first job is to cook up his posset, a dessert of cream, sugar and lemon. All right, you need to press on, yeah? Yeah. Because we need to get it in the glasses. We need to chill it for at least a couple of hours, yeah? Yes, chef. Which one are these, chef? Here, this one here. The first one? Yeah, yep. that's it. Do you want me to keep an eye on that, or am I just get on with the juice? But while Ewan gets on with making the crumble, he takes his eye off the stove. What's happened here, then? I don't know, chef. Oh, you didn't stir the sugar, so it's burnt. Yeah, we've got to start again. Ewan's now seriously behind. He has to put the crumble on hold to quickly remake the possets from scratch. We've got more lemons as well, Chef. I'll have to send down the shop and get some, Chef. Get some sugar as well. Yeah, yeah sugar as well, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's measure that up. It's, it's a tough enough call as it is without having to bin all your cream and start again. He's running out of time. I need to get some double cream. Sorry about that. Yeah. Didn't think I had to stir it. All right, just keep it up. Yeah, you should have done it. Sorry, chef. Here's my man, Ella. You the cream man. Thank you very much. Let's start going then. I had a bit of a disaster to start with, John. So I kind of up against it, but nothing new there, is it? In just two hours, the restaurant will be filled with 60 diners anticipating an exceptional three-course meal. Ewan's second posset mixture is finally cooked 
but he still needs to fill and cool 60 shot glasses. Well, I have to work fast because I was behind because of the mistake at the beginning, so the danger I've got now is rushing, and I, I, I can't rush. I have to get this right. You need a steady hand for this job. They're all done. I'm going to count them. I'm going to double check as they go in the, the blaster. Please be steady. We ain't got none left if you drop them. Definitely got 60. I don't want to get them out and see we've got 59. One, two, three, four. Five times one, two, three, four. 40. I've got 80. It's all right. You've got more than enough. Yeah, I've, de I've definitely got 80. That's okay, brilliant. If you've got any accidents, you get spared. That's exactly what I planned it for. <laughs> right. Finally, the possets are in the blast chiller. But will they set in time? You need to move your arse now, yeah? Yes, Chef. Wendy's searing the venison, but she still needs to prepare 60 cabbage moulds stuffed with wild mushrooms. She doesn't like red meat. She doesn't like cabbage. I'm concerned that Wendy is making a dish that she just doesn't like very much. Wendy, have you tasted them? Are they well seasoned? Um, I haven't tasted it. Somebody else. Why? Why haven't you tasted it? Because I hate cabbage. Well, how Don't do you know it's? But it. how do you know it's going to be okay? Well, that's why there's other people in the kitchen. Hopefully, I'm sure there's things. Well, who that did you get to taste like. it? I got you. Has anyone tasted? <laughs> it's now taken Jane four hours to prepare all the squid, prawns, and sea bream for her starter. I'm a bit over the fish thing now. I'm getting a bit more nervous as service is approaching. She's running out of time. She still has to finish the rich stock from the fish bones, make the celeriac mash, and sear 60 fillets to perfection. She still has a fair bit to do. She really needs to pull her finger out. You can feel the pace start to rise a little bit, the adrenaline kicking in. With just 45 minutes until the first course is served, the focus is now on Jane to deliver. You've got a half hour before service. You need to get two pans going. I you won't do get it done. Two pans, get another pan on. We're not going to make it for eight o'clock, definitely not. Put yeah. another pan on, please. I'm burning myself. Yeah. <gasps> We're slightly behind, so I'm, I'm a bit concerned. 20 minutes before you start, let's go out. Yeah, you're okay. I'm not okay, I'm really not okay. I'm not honest to God, I'm not okay. Stop those, go outside, take a break. Take it. Occupy. You go and take. Go, 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 and, go and take. Go and take a couple of minutes. Go and take a couple of minutes and come get yourself together. Jane, Jane's popped outside for a minute to compose herself. So in the meantime, I'm just helping her out because obviously this is a starter. It needs to go out first. In the restaurant, the charity's supporters start to arrive. Tonight's gala dinner is being held by the children's charity NSPCC, raising funds for Childline, and guests include its founder, Esther Ranson. Pull yourself together. Let's get back into the kitchen. You've done most of it. Let's do the last bit, because I need to have service set up for 8 o'clock. She's back there, a bit teary-eyed, but she's back in there. She's got to kick the whole thing off. I hope she can keep it together. She wears her heart on her sleeve, and when things get tough, she gets a little bit flustered. But we've seen her bring it back from the brink before. You and I know she can do it. Jane, start us away, yeah? Come on, we've got to go now, yeah? Jane, how long? Two minutes. Jane, you've got to move quicker. Service! You hungry? Stop. So am I. Jane, 
legs, the last few. One little push, last few. Finally, Jane's starter is served. I did really well under the circumstances. At one point, I didn't want to continue. What will tonight's guests think of Jane's dish of poached prawn and squid with pan-fried fillet of sea bream on a celeriac mash with a prawn velouté? I thought the first course was out of this world. I'd love to have it again. I thought it was delicious. That was really good. I, I really like the sea bream. I like the way the skin was all nice and crisp. How oh, everybody's enjoying their meal, and we're off to a great start. Very happy so far. Let's see what happens next. Wendy, let's go, yeah? Yes, chef. seems to be in charge of the situation for now. But I still worry about that meat and that cabbage. How many to go? Oh, just another 40 odd. Yeah, Wendy, you're doing very well. Keep going. Well done. Thank you. Last one. Let's have it. will be fine. Fingers crossed it's cooked correctly. Will the diners enjoy Wendy's main of roast fillet of venison with wild mushrooms wrapped in savoy cabbage, confit potato and a bitter chocolate sauce? I'd say it's a surprising thing to have chocolate sauce with venison, but it works well, doesn't it? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> The bitter chocolate sauce was divine. The venison was perfectly cooked. The venison was excellent. Uh, the one left on, obviously, I think if you look around the table, was the cabbage. And it was just poorly presented, poorly cooked, and not very edible. I actually had to add some salt to the cabbage. I thought it was slightly bland. Everything else sensational, but cabbage was not making it happen for us tonight. Ouch. Ewan now has to bring all four elements of his dessert together. Ewan, yes, come on, yes, concentrate yes, on the job. Let's get it done. The lemon possets have set, but Ewan's taking far too long assembling the crumble. I've seen how that dish has got to be plated up, and there's a lot of work there, and it's tricky, and it's delicate, and that's really not him. The crumble's very dry. So it's just falling off the top of the rhubarb. You take the ring away, it just falls. The crumble doesn't stick. Do you expect them to be a little bit smarter? Greg, I expect them to be completely smarter. Yeah, a bit, I'm, I'm disappointed. It's not come out as well as I'd hoped. You and desserts away. Come on, yes, we've got sir. to move now. Come on, we need to go quicker than that. Yeah, they've been waiting 10 minutes already. It's the last one. Service! It's about time, it's about time. Come on, get it down. This way round. Service down. Done. No, no, what about this? You've got 12 more. I'm sorry, I thought I was done. I thought you deserved it all gone. What happened? Apparently not. Are you sure we're not done? Go, 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 let's get the food out. You're letting yourself down. You're doing a good job, but you've let yourself down. I apologise. I thought I was done. I was excited. Downstairs, service can't begin until they've got all 60 desserts. Uh, come on, you and we've got people downstairs waiting. You in, let's go quick, yeah? Last, last lot. Finally, ten minutes late, Ewan's desserts are served. Yeah, it wasn't quite a while. 
I was a bit stressed towards the end when I was late, but I think I've done all right. What will the guests think of Ewan's rhubarb crumble with lemon posset, honeycomb crisps and creme anglaise? It was, you know, fantastic. Pudding great. Rhubarb crumble, one of my favourites. A little too sweet, but I enjoyed it all the same. I'm trying to work out what's happening here. I, th I think the crumble, for me, was a little bit all over the place. It looks as if someone had sat on it. Yeah, I thought the lemon posset was very nice, but the rhubarb was a bit odd. Um, I like the different textures, and the lemon was especially nice. They have sweated, they've cried, but they've got the food on the table every single time. They have done themselves proud. For amateurs, it is extraordinary. And our celebrities have come a huge way. Ewan has impressed with his big flavoured food, but his inexperience is still causing basic errors. Being a chef is not easy. It is a pressure situation, but this is a competition. You've got to keep your nerve. Wendy continues to have issues with her flavours, but has proved she can deliver under great pressure. I am absolutely shattered. I know it's going to get harder, but I'm just looking forward to whatever's thrown at us. Jane is still battling with nerves, but when she overcomes them, she produces outstanding food. I really didn't bargain for how much it takes out of you but it's meant a great deal to me, and there is no way I would give up now. I'm not someone who gives up, ever. We have given our three finalists some very, very tough tests, John, and we are almost at the final stages. That title is so close, you could almost reach out and touch it. Who has the passion? Who has the skill? Who has the tenacity? That's the question right now. Next time, the celebrities travel to Morocco. Go, go, go! Woo! I feel like I'm going to collapse in any minute. Then it's back to London for their most demanding challenge yet, cooking for five of the most respected French chefs in the world. That dish is what you wish you could cook in your own restaurant. 